All right, everyone, welcome back. Josh B. Tynox Goldman joined today by a uh, becoming a regular on the show, Elliot Compton. Elliot, firstly, man, how are you doing this afternoon? I am very well. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me back again. I think this is my like fourth time on, on the show, so uh, definitely a regular now, huh? Yeah, in fact, I think that might actually make Absolutely. you almost uh, our highest recurring guest. So there you go, a little award for you. doesn't mean anything, but a little award for you. But yeah, uh, cool. <laughs> look, man, I want to get straight into it. And yep. the question that I have for you is, what does Stuart Nickel need to do to earn his shot? You know, is it does he need to get a win over, you know, a large name here in Australia? Does it have to be a large name international opponent? What does he need to do to earn his shot? Man, I think he's done enough to get his shot, personally. Um, he's, what is he, 8-0 and with seven first-round finishes or seven finishes. Um, the only fight that he didn't finish, he suffered a broken orbital in round one, you know, five-round title fight and still won uh, against a dangerous, very unorthodox, freakishly strong opponent. Um, he's finished international opponent after international opponent. Um, I think he's done enough to get his shot, you know. Um, I know there's, there's calls for him to fight Anthony Drillich and Gauchi, and I think that they are absolutely sick matchups. Um, maybe that is something that ha- has to happen down the track. I don't know. Let's see. You know, I, I know um, he has like the, the people have been vocal about them fighting, but at the moment, Stewie's just been a little bit. Uh, he's, he's unavailable to fight at the minute. You know, he's he's not turning down any fights at all. He's just unavailable to be booked. He's got a few things uh, happening in, in his in his in his life and whatever else, and uh, he just. He's also got a few things in the pipeline too. So it's like it's one of those things, you know, if you know Stuart Nickel, you know that he will fight anyone that there is to fight full stop. You know, like the guy walks around at 60 kilos and went in there absolute heavyweight grappling division and won it. You know, he's he's not he's not the guy to back down mm. from a fight ever. So um I think he's done enough. Um, I think most people think that he's done enough. Um We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, you know. He, he'll definitely fight when the, when the time's right and we'll, we'll see where we end up with it. Absolutely. Um, speaking on Stuart, Elliot, <clears throat> um, obviously, you know, the, the the call was made that that, that fight was uh, was made, was, was you know, tried to happen between Stuart and, uh, and Sean Gauchy for Hex 30. Yep. Um, when Stuart is available to return, um you know, pending his his personal life and those sorts of things, which everyone goes through. Yep. How 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 likely do you think that that matchup could be made again? Yeah, I think I think the the fight is an exciting fight for everybody. You know, um, I think it's it's one of those things that it's the, the Stewie's like like I said, if you know Stewie, Stewie, if you offered Stewie a fight at lightweight, he would take it. He is that guy, you know. Um, he would never turn down a fight against anybody. He's just in a position right now where he just kind of needs to just sit back and 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 just focus on on what he's got ahead of him. And then and then we'll see. You know, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe the Gauchi fight makes sense. Maybe the Drillich fight makes sense. Maybe Drillich gets signed. Maybe Gauchi gets signed. Maybe Stewie gets signed. At, at the moment, there's a lot going on that. Uh, just kind of needs to just be left left to play out a little bit, and then you know we can get back to business. You know. What's up, guys? It's uh, it's Josh here from the stands. And look, I know you're in the middle uh, of a good little interview that we're currently doing, but I want to take a second of your time just to give a quick little shout out to today's sponsor, uh, Train Aid. Obviously, they're uh, they're big supporters of us, like we are um, of them. And today they're uh, they're sponsoring this video. Um, and look, I want to I want to let you guys know about a little product they do. Their, their premium product, Train Aid Hydration. Um, it's the best hydration formula on the market, guys. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. And look, if you don't believe me, ask guys like Israel Adesanya, Alexander Volkanovsky, Leon Edwards. You ever heard of these guys? I mean, they're the top athletes in the world. Uh, and they're all taking train out hydration. Um, it really is the number one formula um, in the world for hydration. And in, in the summer months here in Australia, I mean, it's something that uh, I think everyone should be taking. Um, and Trainade have, uh, have been very nice uh, to give us a discount code, a very healthy di- discount code as well. I mean, it's a nice little discount code. If you use the code FTS15 at the checkout, um, they will give you 15% off. Um, we'll leave a link um, to their website in, in this uh, description of this video. And uh, yeah, check them out, guys. Please support them uh, because they are supporting us. Cheers. Yeah, definitely. My next yeah. question is, uh, you know, 
I want to know where do you think the future lies for you know Chloe Henry in terms of what do you think is next for her because it really feels like women's MMA, particularly on the local scene here in Australia, has really just been doing bits this year and seems to be really growing exponentially in terms of the quality of the fights we're seeing, the quality yeah. of the fighters. So where do you think her future lies this year in terms of what could be next for her? Yeah, man, I agree with that. The women's MMA in this country has, has like come on leaps and bounds. You know, I remember seeing like the first ever female MMA fight in this country with Mandy Stewart back in the day. You know, um, man, shit, like the, the the sport has grown so much and it's providing so much opportunity for all of these young girls. You know, um, as for Chloe, Chloe's a, a rare talent. You know, she's an absolute freak when it comes to uh, putting it together in the gym. You know, she's got a good solid team behind her. She. Uh, same thing. She's kind of unavailably booked at the moment. She's got a couple of injuries that we, we've got to work on, make sure it gets fixed up. Chance that she might need surgery on an injury. We're not sure at the moment. Just trying to just navigate that. Um, you know, she's in, in the process of making the decision on whether she moves to the pro ranks or does she have a couple more at amateur or, or whatever, you know. Um, but I think the sky's the limit for her, you know. I yeah. think uh, she can go as far as she wants in this sport. Um, she's got the right people around her, in my opinion. She's got her head on her shoulders. She understands the game, she understands what's expected of her as a fighter in terms of not just what you do in the cage on fight night, but, you know, the way that you promote yourself, the way that you manage your career and everything else. She's a switched on girl, you know, she's a, uh, she's a lawyer. <laughs> she kind of gets it, you know, she's, she's smarter than yeah. the rest of us. That's for sure. So, um, look, I think she's got a bright future ahead of her. And I think, uh, once she kind of gets through this kind of like bit of adversity that she's facing at the moment, we'll, we'll see her make a return and, and make a run at, uh, at the top. Absolutely. Um, Elliot, I want to touch on, on, uh, on Tom Nolan, obviously yep. um, massive for him getting his, uh, his first win inside the UFC. And, and I know how much it you as well, being a yep. coach, you know what I mean? You, you want to see a guy who's worked so hard to achieve, achieve that goal. And, and, you know, when I was speaking to him on fight week, he is a different guy on, on fight week, as opposed to talking to him in, in, in past, you know, we've spoken yeah. to him many times, but speaking to him, you know, just before cutting weight, three days out, for, three days out from the fight, it was um, a different sense. He could feel it just over the over the computer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but what he did was very impressive, and and finishing Victor inside one round was was awesome. So, what did it mean to you personally to see Tom go out there and and do what he did? Uh, you know, Saturday. Week? Yeah, man, for sure. You know, like whenever you see some of the guys that you train with or you coach win, it's like. A euphoric feeling it's almost like you, you're winning a fight for yourself you know what i mean you're as happy for them as you are when, when you went on fight night um but i think for me with this one for tom take the ufc out of it take future out of it take everything out of it i think for me seeing the growth that tom made from between fights was probably the most uh rewarding for me um i think like he see the growth that he made as, as a as a person in, in in between the two fights was kind of like really really cool to to be a part of you know or to be a part of I should say to, to watch mm -hmm. you know um, and I feel like the Tom Nolan that fought uh, homeboy back in January um, Mota versus like Nicholas Mota mm -hmm. Nicholas Mota to, to the guy that fought um, Victor Martinez two weeks gone whatever it is now. Uh, that's a completely different Tom Nolan, uh, both in the gym, in the cage, in his in his own head. Um, I think he discovered a lot about himself in those camps, and uh, you know, I think um, I think that has unlocked a whole another big train, you know. And I think um, the realization of like, oh wow, like this is this is who I am, and this is who I'm going to be, both in and out of the ring um, or cage, whatever you want to call it. I think really opened his eyes to how bright his future can actually be. And uh, I think it's just given him a whole level of, of confidence that he didn't know that he even had. You know, he, like you said, when you're around Tom in fight week, he's a very, very different person. And like the confidence just kind of like oozes out of him. You know, there's like an aura around him, which I think is really cool. And he kind of like, he kind of becomes the big train, so to speak. Um, but yeah. I feel like, now after winning this fight and the things that he went through throughout the camp and physically, mentally, emotionally, everything else and everything that's happened post-fight, I think he's kind of really just come into himself as a person. And uh, I think, like, from now on, you're just going to see, like, this 
the big train steam roll on, you know, I think um, it's it's mm-hmm. a eye opening experience for for him and for me. Like it was really cool to stand there with his brother and my dad in the, in the corner and uh, watch that come to uh, fruition and us see the person that we can see that he he is and that he can become and watch that actually happen right in front of our eyes. It was like a a really rewarding experience, much greater than than fighting, you know, better than the UFC, better than anything, you know. It's like uh, when you see somebody really uh, become who it is that they're meant to be is a really cool uh, experience. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, Mm. you talk about witnessing that growth, you know, between these two fights, but I want to take you back to when he first stepped in the gym. And, you know, I'm curious, did you know when he first walked in there that he was going to be a special talent or was it something that you sort of witnessed as he developed as a martial artist, became more comfortable, more confident on the mat? You know, did you know from from the jump that he was a special talent or was it something you kind of discovered as he grew? No, nah, brother. I knew that Tom was a special talent when I saw him fight on XFC back in uh, 2017 when he fought, I think his name was Joshua Francois. I don't know if you ever remember this. Uh, this is actually a wild mm. story, man. I remember... We were backstage warming up. We had a few guys fighting on, on that card. I think Tom would have been like maybe 17 at the time. I didn't know him. I just like I knew Zach Talbot, obviously. And Zach had said to me about like, hey man, you need to watch this kid. He's, he's like the next big thing. It was like a pretty short from memory. It was like the SFC featherweight amateur title, I think. Don't quote me. Um, anyway, this this kid, Josh Francois, was like the most aggressive guy that I've ever seen ever at a fight show. And I've seen, I've seen some shit, you know? And uh, he was like charging at Tom in the dressing room. And like, when they take you to like the meeting point before you walk out, kept trying to like fight Tom in his corner. And like before, like while their music was playing anyway, this guy walked first. And uh, I remember looking at Tom, it was a 17 year old kid. And this guy was a grown man trying to intimidate him. I remember like seeing the look on Tom's face of like, keep going bro because this is awesome because when we get out there in a minute i'm gonna punch your face in you know what i mean and he wasn't phased by it whatsoever and I'm like, that's a pretty cool attitude for like a young kid you know anyway he went out there and uh tom walked out second and this guy blocked off the entrance to the cage and wouldn't even let tom get in like that's that's how serious right. this guy was about fighting tom he didn't even want him to get in the cage you know what i mean and like peter hickmont the bull was like pulling him aside saying bro if you want this fight to happen let him get in the cage you know anyway Tom went out there and just uh, destroyed this this guy, you know, like uh, respectfully to this Josh guy, you know, but like uh, he quit on the stool between rounds. And like from that moment, I was like, man, this is this kid's going to be a talent, you know. And then obviously I kind of watched his career uh, progress and I watched his pro debut and, you know, his second pro fight. So like, this kid's like going to be like, like he's going to be a challenge for any of our guys, you know. And then uh, I get a phone call from him one day. Hey, man, I want to come join the gym. Is that cool? So like, yeah, of course, man. And Literally, from the day he walked in the Tim Compton training center, you would think that he'd been part of the team since he was like 15 years old. You know, he just slotted in, fit in with the rest mm-hmm. of us, like like we'd known each other forever. You know, and um, yeah, man, like when he fought Niam, uh, I, I just the way everything about the way that he carried himself, the way that he got through the camp, the adversity he went through in that camp, and uh, the way that he handled himself on fight night, whatever else, um, I was like, man, this kid's going to be a star, you know. And here we are; he's on his way to start him. Touch wood. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and 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 off the back of that, I mean his three fights or two fights into his UFC career and his next fight will be on a on a pay per view. Um yeah. that's pretty incredible in itself. Um and but look, you know, the the fight sort of materialized so fast. I mean, the Tuesday after his fight, he's already got a fight announced. Um that's relatively unheard of you don't really hear that too often these days and and i saw one of the comments from our post of that we reported said gotta respect the guy's activity and it's like you know dude's getting after it and and people notice that i mean how 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 quickly after the the last fight did those talks begin i mean are you on the way home on the plane you know speaking with danny and and those guys about the the next fight or, or remington Brother, we have the best management in the game. You know, we work work with Ruby, yeah. these guys, Danny and Remington, man. Yeah. They know what's what. And uh, let me tell you, mm. those discussions were already happening in the dressing room, bro. You know, they were happening in the wow. doctor's medical tent, you know, like... Uh, wow. Mm. Yeah, man, like, it, when, when you... I don't know, man, like, I think Tom's very, very similar to me in a sense that 
when you don't have fighting in your life, it's kind of like you almost lose your, your purpose a little bit. You're like, oh man, what am I actually doing here? You know, like fighting is the thing that keeps you on the straight and narrow and keeps you on the right track, you know? Um, and like, I mean, Tom's young, like he's got plenty of time, but at the same time, he doesn't want to waste time, you know? Like he knows the talent that he has and, you know, the team around him knows the talent that he has and he knows also the opportunity that he has. And he, it's like it's an opportunity that's not granted to many people. So I think for him, he just wants to grab it with both hands and run after it, you know, and he he wants to let it be known. You know, there's not many guys that get signed to the UFC or get signed to contender series at five fights and then signed at six fights, you know. So I think for him, he's like, he wants it to be known that this didn't happen by accident. It's not a fluke. He belongs there and he belongs with the best of them. And uh, he wants to put his run together, man. And I think fair play to him. There's a lot to be said for activity, you know, like, for me personally, I, I like mm. to fight as much as like long breaks between fights is probably the worst thing possible for me. And I think Tom feels the same. Look at him on Eternal. Look at his pro career. Man, I think he had what was it, three fights within nine months or something with us when he first came across, you know? Mm. Um, mm. I think an active fighter is as long as you're injury free and you're not taking damage throughout camp and uh, th throughout the fight. You know what I mean? We train very hard at, at Tim Compton, but we train very smart too. So um, we're very mindful of the amount of damage that we do and don't take in the gym and uh, structure camp accordingly. So there's no reason why we can't fight every like three or four months, you know, and put together a run like that, you know. Uh, mm. He's also got bills to pay, I guess. He wants to make some money. He wants to, you know, uh, he just got engaged. He's <laughs> He's got commitments now, you know. He's, uh, he's, he's, yeah. he's after yeah. it. So fair play to him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Ellie, you know, I want to talk about you then for a sec. You know, you said Ellie, you know, you want to fight as often as possible. You know, an active fighter is a good fighter. But I guess my question for you is, at this stage in your career, for you, are you yep. more focused on fights that will, you know, add to your legacy? You know, so maybe taking the hardest fights against the people that you know other fighters maybe don't want to step up and challenge themselves against. Or for you, are you more interested in fun fights, fights that excite you, that bring about more love for the game, fights that really make you sort of you know, wake up that extra hour early to put in an extra bit of mileage in the gym? Yeah, man. But that You know what? That's a really good question. It's a question that I do a lot of interviews like this and no one ever asked me that. So um, thank you for that, man. For me, I'm definitely at a point where my whole career has been based on taking the hardest fights that I can possibly get. You, you ask any promoter that I've ever worked with, I'm a yes, man. I've never said no to an opportunity. Um, so I, I've always gone after the hardest fights that I could possibly get, you know, like uh, I remember fighting like these killer ties with like 200 wins and uh, like a hundred knockouts in the first round sort of shit when I'd have like 15 or 16 fights, you know, I was fighting the guys that the more experienced guys in this country didn't want to fight. You know, I was that guy that would just put my hand up and say, yes, yeah. so I win some, lose some, draw some, been robbed some. That That's the story of my career, you know, and I love that about my career. That's probably one of the biggest things that I'm proud of, you know, um, my record's not perfect, but at the end of the day, I, I, for me, it's about resume, more so about record. You know, obviously, I don't want a negative record. I'm, I'm well aware of that, I'm, and I'm far from having mm -hmm. a negative record, especially in uh, the kickboxing and tie boxing record side of things. But for me, you're dead right. I'm at a point where I, I want fights that excite me, fights that you know that are fun fights, fights that interest me. You know, like. Um, I still want hard fights. Obviously, I don't want easy fights. I don't want I don't want to like duck and dive or anything like that. Um, in terms of getting up an hour earlier in the morning, I'm already up at four thirty in the morning every day anyway. So I don't know if I know about getting up any earlier than that. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah, man, you're, you're dead right. I want the fights that excite me. Fights that you know, like get like, like get get my heart racing a bit. You know, things that like fire me up and go, man, this is this is exciting. This is uh, this is a test. This is a challenge. Um, and it like. I, I never fall out of love with the game. I never fall out of love with fighting. This is who I am through and through. But at the same time, I want the fights that keep me in love with it, you know? Um, mm. And that's where I'm at in my career now. And I feel like I've earned that right to to, to do that and call the shots that I want, you know? Um, I've had like 65 mm. fights now and I've fought the best in, best in the world time and time again, uh, take, taking some damage and giving some damage and, I'm at a point where I just, I, I really want to enjoy my career. And I, like, not that I haven't enjoyed my career till now, but you're dead right. I want the fights that excite me, that, you know, the fun fights that go, oh, that's an interesting matchup. Let's, let's have a crack, you know? Yeah, mm. Mm. absolutely. And and on that, Elliot, 
on on the fight that you have next, I think um, backing off what you said too, you know, you want the fun fights, and I think guys that are putting on fun fights and more so than uh, than rankings and those sort of stuff is beat down. Um, obviously, they don't have a main event or a co-main event announced yet. I don't know, you know, there's there may be one behind the scenes, but um, is there any updates on your next fight? Because I mean, you fitting on those cards are perfect. I think. You know, you could co-main, main event, any of those cards. But particularly, have you got any uh, updates on 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 your next fight? Yeah, well, look, we um, I had to take a bit of a break. You know, um, I sustained sustained an injury in in Dubai that I had to look after, which is why the fight with uh, Lock and Sit never went ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, we I literally was in talks with my management with uh, Remington this morning. We've got a few a few plays um, at the moment. He's asked me not to release too much, so. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to keep it close to my chest at the moment. Um, hopefully within like the next week or two, we'll be able to like make some sort of announcement. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, man, I, I, I'm sure there's no announcement from Beatdown, but Damo's smart, man. He He's probably got a million things lined up. You know, the guy, yeah. he's, he definitely knows his biscuits when it comes to MMA and promoting and yeah. fighting and everything else. Um, but like I said, man, I'm at a point where I want fights that are fun, that interest me, to get, get me fired up. Um, mm. You know, like for sure, like belts are cool and rankings are cool and all that. But I've kind of been there and done that. You know, I, I want fights that, you know, like really just a, a fan friendly fights, fights that like make me like, yeah, man, this is this is what I live for. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's where I'm at. You know, whether that comes from beat down, whether that comes from glory, whether it comes from one championship, whether it comes from eternal, whether it comes from karate combat, whether it comes from, from anywhere. I don't, I don't care. I'm at a mm. point where like, if it makes sense to me and it excites me, it's like, and it intrigues me. Yeah. Cool. Let, let's sign the contract and let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, last one for me, Elliot, uh, when we spoke the other day, uh, just over Instagram, you know, you mentioned that you want the whole team, uh, at, uh, in, in Perth for, for three or five, obviously some guys could, could, uh, could fight the night before for eternal. Yep. Anyone um, at this stage, any early prospects on, on who we can expect to see on that card? Uh, yeah, man, we got a whole bunch of guys, you know, but uh, it also depends on how some of these guys pull up from uh, the fights in June. You know, we've got yep. Dom fighting uh, Tim Rogers on June 22nd. Yep. We've got Blair. He's fighting uh, Nick Capu June 22nd. That's a great, great fight. fight. That's a great, great fight. fight. That's an epic fight. You know, we've mm. also got Johnny Fraser training with us now. So, you know, he's really? another front runner for that August card. Um, so like, I mean, they're three top guys right there that would like make perfect sense for that card. Uh, Ethan Mitchell, I was mm-hmm. talking to Cam about getting him on that card this morning. Um, he was supposed to fight Jesse Murray. Jesse Murray said yep. he wanted to fight him on the June 22nd card, but not sure what happened, but Jesse pulled out again, um, is what it is. Shit happens. Um, yep. so he's left without an opponent again, you know? And I know Ethan's super keen to uh, just to get active again. You know, I think he felt pretty hard done by in that last fight, but mm. you know, it is what it is. Um, so if we can get him on that eternal card in in uh, August, like the cams kind of already made us an offer on that, so that's cool. Um, and I, I think we could, we could literally almost have fill one side of the card on that. You know, mm. uh, you know, but we've also got like beat down in in July. There's guys mm. that will put on that card. You know, so it's kind of like. It's looking like a pretty busy calendar at the moment, but we've got to kind of just see how it plays out. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know, man. I feel like there's so much pressure on on, on fighters these days that they have to just fight for this and they just have to fight for that. I mean, and it's like, oh, come on, man. Let's just let let it play out. You know, let let, yeah. let these guys fight, let those guys mm-hmm. fight. Let's just get back to enjoying the sport a little bit and enjoying what, mm-hmm. we, what we love to do with a little bit less pressure on everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, there's no pressure on, on, on me as a, as a, training partner and coach and i mean i'm at a point in my career as we said before where there's not a lot of pressure on me but i feel like for some of these young lads man there's just so much pressure on like i've got to be in the ufc by the time i've had six fights or seven fights or, or less and i've got to take this track and if i don't fight this guy and it's like man at the end of the day just just fight enjoy fighting enjoy mm-hmm. showing up at the gym enjoy getting better and fate will take its will take its course. Definitely get after it. Don't don't get me wrong. Don't sit back and expect it to come to you because that will never happen. But at the same time, enjoy enjoy the process of getting there. You know, what I mean, take a little mm-hmm. bit of pressure off you know, and enjoy what you do a little bit. Yeah, it's um, always like it, they're expected like to that. be superstars rather than martial artists, which is what they are. Hundred percent. And you know what? And that's really cool because, like, 
it's cool to be a superstar and it's cool to make money and, you know, set yourself up for life and whatever else for sure. But uh, don't forget your bread and butter at the same time, you know, and it's like, mm-hmm. it, it's good to be a businessman, but if you ain't got a business, it's, it's pointless, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I think there's so much pressure on, on like making the right play and making the right moves that like people sometimes just forget to just enjoy the moment and accept the challenge, have a fight. You know, like oh, I've got to be, I've got to be five and I've got to be six and zero. If I fight that guy, he might beat me, but I think I'm better than him. But who gives a shit at the end of the day? You know what I mean? Just get in and fight and prove to yourself and prove to everybody else that you are who you say you are. Walk it like you talk it, mm. and man, if it's meant to be, it'll be. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, I think like the enjoyment sometimes is lost a little bit in this younger generation. There's just so many outside pressures from like, no, no disrespect for you guys. You, you're the good guys, but from like. <laughs> From media, from yeah, fans, for from, sure. Like mm. opponents from different gyms, and I don't know, man. It's like just just enjoy what you do and let let's support each other. You know, like there's no mm. reason why these guys can't fight now and then fight again six months down the track and do it again. Like I don't know, it's a little bit sometimes. Uh, I I just think that the uh, the meaning of what we do, the, the meaning for of why we do this, is sometimes lost. You know, and I for think sure. it's important mm. that particularly for this younger generation that they bring it back because otherwise we're going to end up with a bunch of disgruntled athletes that aren't going to enjoy what they've done, you know, like yeah. not everybody's going to make it to the top in this game and that's okay too. You know what I mean? There's uh, obviously everybody wants to make it to the top, but you know, sometimes it is what it is, you know? Mm, mm. Absolutely. Uh, Elliot, it's a, uh, it's always a pleasure to chat to you, man. You're our most featured guest for a reason. Uh, I think it speaks volumes, mate. You are, uh, you want to, in in all honesty, you're probably my favorite person to have on this on this program and, and chat to. Appreciate um, it. You provide a lot of good insight, um, and and you know you guys are humble and what the whole team does at Team Compton, I think, is uh, one that should be followed. You know, for, for the standards that you guys set um, and what you guys expect from your athletes is um, one to be admired, mate. Always appreciate your time. Thank you again for joining us. Um, we look forward to also me. look forward to being with you in Perth. That's going to be a fun one. For uh, sure, man. Get to see uh, get to see Tom and uh, and cover the fight fight week there and the rest of the guys on the Eternal Card, mate. Always a pleasure, and we'll chat to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Thank man. You.